The following review contains multiple uses of the F word. Some ways creative. Many ways just my reaction to this. Cue title scene. Madoka Magica is a 2011 anime that most people would assume, based on the way the show looks and its name, falls under the category of Magical Girl. For those of you who don't know, Magical Girl is a genre that basically revolves around young teen girls who, usually via some form of a magical creature, get the ability to save the world using their magic powers. Pretty self-explanatory. This is a genre I tend to avoid. Why? Well, two reasons. First up, they tend to usually all be very cliché, very loud, very annoying. And two, well... Actually, yeah, I'm still going to go with they're just really annoying. But when I heard about this series, I was curious. I was hearing it's actually quite the opposite from most Magical Girls. I heard it's very dark, very disturbing, very violent. And then I saw it and I was like, this is very dark, very disturbing, very violent. Essentially, the series is a deconstruction. Meaning that it takes the genre, rather be popular or not, takes all the elements of it, twists them, analyzes them, and re-puts them together in a way that either is meant to fit a more realistic or a darker tone. Unlike a spoof comedy which takes the elements and puts them into a funnier one, essentially the goal of a deconstruction is to kind of take these genres and put them into a more adult fashion. And I'm not going to lie, for the most part, I don't like deconstructions. Rather, you're talking about the horribly put together Evangelion, the debatably annoying school days, or even some American movies, Deconstructions have a tendency of usually relying way too much on the fact that they are a deconstruction instead of really going with a plot that makes sense, characters we can follow, or a story that is just investable. And I can honestly say Madoka Magica does none of these things. This series has got to be one of the most well put together deconstructions I've ever seen in my life. The story, though at first seeming simple, tricks you, as it turns out to be very dark. The way too cute, very stylistic look of the show succeeds in totally tricking you as it proceeds to throw you down some stairs into a pit of alligators with its dark themes and overall violent tone. And I totally chopped this up to a plot and story that are executed perfectly. These characters and the story they're in fit to a T, and it allows for the show to not only be followable, but something that's really going to haunt and stick with you. A lot of times after each episode, I just found myself kind of sitting there thinking, what the fuck did I just watch, and really unable to think about anything else. And essentially, like I said, the way it plots, it starts off like most Magical Girl shows. You have Madoka. Now, this is a character, you're either going to like her, or you're just going to forget about her. Even though the series is about her, it doesn't really, she doesn't have much to do with anything. Everything kind of goes along without her. She doesn't really play much of a relevancy to it. And this could bother some people. It's called Madoka Magica, but Madoka doesn't really do anything. That being said, they do what they do with her very well. And I can honestly say, even though the character doesn't have much of a personality, she's just your typical, everyday, girl-next-door, nice, friendly, you know, she's a kid. Uh, they do, it, it does work for what it needs to do. And the thing is that she discovers a talking cat squirrel thing that by the end of the series will completely creep you out, Kiyube, who is being chased by another magical girl, Homura. And the thing about Homura is she is very dark, very mysterious, and does she end up sort of being a good character? We'll get to that in a minute. But Kiyube informs our pink-haired heroine that she has the ability to give you powers to fight evil things called witches and their other magical girls, and you'd think that, eh, Madoka will just accept and it's your typical Freak of the Week type style. WRONG! In fact, Madoka's afraid. Basically, Kyube says, I will grant you any one wish if you agree to fight for me. And the thing is, even though Madoka's tempted and she thinks of a lot of things she'd want, she's actually very smart about it. She's like, this could get dangerous, and she's afraid to do it, and she doesn't want to do it. And the whole show is basically her deciding, what should I wish for? Should I wish for it? Should I do something? Should I stay in the background? All this stuff, and it is handled very well and put together very nicely. And there are other magical girls besides those two. Some are, and just other characters in general to this show, run the gambit of some being so generic you're going to know exactly what they're for the minute they show up, and others being very fascinating and people who you want to follow and are a little disappointed when the series kind of moves a little too fast. That being said, there is a lot this show tries to get into, 
So a couple things you kind of understand. But by far, the character who completely steals and makes this show has got to be Sayaka. This character is fascinating. Like Madoka, she's just your average, everyday, normal girl. But unlike anyone else in this show, or most deconstructions in general, she is a character that actually fits the point of a deconstruction. I'm not going to spoil it here because it's so amazing, but essentially they take the character concept, the typical character story arc of character gets powers, character has problems, character gets stronger, character ends up triumphant, and flip it on its head. It is so perfectly handled as we see this character actually start out very nice and confident, but spiral into this complete mess in a way that is just done so perfectly, and this show is just so good to watch just for that. Now the thing is that many of you are probably thinking, Kevin, are there any faults? Is this a 10 out of 10? Well, for the first eight episodes or so, this show was perfect. I'm thinking I have no complaints, no problems. This is the definition of a 10 out of 10. And then there's a revelation. We learned something. The plot sort of changes. We are told something. And the thing is that it's done very odd to where the plot was sort of building up to it, but nothing changes after it. It feels like the plot really wanted to encapsulate you with that, and I'm sure for most people this twist doesn't really bother or change anything, but for me it kind of felt like the show is really riding on it, and it's one of those twists that could either make the show go perfect or crash and burn, and it causes this show to crash and burn bad. I'd say the last four episodes of this, the show never quite recovers. It gets very ludicrous. It stops making sense. And because everything had made perfect sense, it gets very convoluted, ridiculous, to the point where the final episode of this, I think, is a really big just mess, 24 minutes of just random stuff thrown on a screen. But the thing is, it's not like a lot of shows where the, a bad ending really hurts it thing is, is that it's still interesting to watch as it goes down, and unfortunately that does mean it relies way too much on a typical deconstruction where it's just watch our genre be the opposite of what is normally done. However, that being said, I still think Madoka Magica has fascinating characters, an interesting plot, a beautiful style that lends itself to the story very well. I will say Madoka Magica is fucked up! I will also say Madoka Magica is an 8 out of 10 on the fantasy scale. And what do you consider a fantasy? In the comments section below, give me your favorite types of, like, fantasy genre things, or tell me what types of genres you wish would get deconstructions. Because this is going to be the last time I'm going to talk about Madoka Magica. I think so, right? God damn it!